Ladies and gentlemen, it is 4 p.m. on Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. It is time for a brand new epic product launch, live from Mission Control in Northwike by the Sea. Today, we have selected six EPIC members who each have an important development to announce to the rest of the planet. Fento Easy will show us their new rock, the revolutionary OEM Fento Second Autocorrelator. Imaging Optic will show their big lift, a new wavefront sensor with the highest resolution. Pandao, the one that everyone is talking about, is gonna demonstrate the optical fabrication chain design software tool. Focus Light is here to show their new laser diet stack for hair removal. Lucida is going to demonstrate their new software tool to design AWGs in photonic integrated circuits with the click of a mouse. And last, but definitely not least, BPI is going to show their new interoperable software platform for the design of photonic devices. Let's open up the Zoom room and get started. So the Zoom room is here very open and we are ready to rock. Today we have a fantastic group of companies, a fantastic group of companies announcing something new to the rest of the world. This is the Epic Photonics News Show when we announce new products that will make a difference in the photonic industry. And today with us, we have Fento Easy, Focus Light, Imaging Optic, Lucida, Pandao, and VPI Photonics. Remember, this meeting is not only here in the Zoom room, it's also broadcasted live in the YouTube channel. So hello, YouTubers of the world. If you have any question, please post it in the chat. But if you want to get in touch with any of the companies shown today, all you have to do is send me an email, jose.pozo at epic asocom and I would love to introduce you because I love when Epic members do business. This meeting is only going to take one hour. We start on time and we'll finish on time. So there is no time to relax. Let's get the meeting started. And we can't start with something more attractive. The company Focus Light, especially after the acquisition of Limo, became the laser manufacturer with the best micro optics integration. Today, they are going to show us a success story. Their new two products, new V Sleek, V Silk 2, and V Silk 2 Pro series, laser diode stacks for hair removal. I wish they also make laser diode stack for hair growth, but they don't. Hair removal it is, and we have with us Jason Cao, product manager from Focus Light. The room and the attention of everyone, and today we are global, goes to you, Jason. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm the Jason, uh, the product uh, manager of Fox Light. I want to introduce the new product uh, of the hair removal field. Today's theme is uh, a new uh, new uh, new V Sub Two and V Sub Two Pro series uh, for hair remover. Okay, the pl uh, application of the uh, laser doubt is based on the selective photosomolysis, melanin in the hair remover uh, and the absorb uh, the specific wavelengths and um, convert into heat. Uh, thus destroying hair follicle and realize hair remover. Fox Light uh, Visuk series product is special for hair remover since 2018. The first uh, generation Visuk have been launched one after another uh, with a total of five products as shown in the feature. Uh, it's a mainly feature uh, conductive cord, uh, laser doubt, micro optical component integrated a uh, high peak power short part wise in the free design more reliable. Facing the future, Visuk 2 and Visuk 2 Pro have been released now. It is remarkable improvement lying in energy, size, weight, peak power, and continue to maintain the tradition of collimate beam. Okay, first the Visuk 2. Visuk 2 is 120 watt per bar and 30% uh, duty circle. The first feature is uh, it has a uh, high effective energy. That is uh, 
the higher energy injected into the skin per unit time. We can see uh, the difference between the two generations of VSUC. At a 30 millisecond, VSUC can output energy at a higher frequency and a higher power. In this way, regardless of seal or slide, uh, sliding mode, VSUC2 can make the high remover more effective and more comfortable. And uh, another important feature, VSUC2 is equipped with, equipped with the faster M-size collimator, which brings the collimation of the out light, uh, output light and make the penetration uh, depth greater, makes the hair remover more effective and more secure. Moreover, it's not uh, necessary to use optical waveguide, which is bulky and uh, energy consuming. And uh, we took to uh, adopt the Indian free design, two years and limit shot warranty and dust proof design, which enable customer to use laser with high reliability and high stability. And the, the reduction of product size and weight is about uh, uh, 50% and 30% and can bring about the light uh, weight and uh, miniaturization design of the handpiece and is conductive to the use of the operator. Another pro series product we seek to prove, it is the first 200 watts per bar product of Fox light. First, it has a higher peak power, which is 66% higher than we seek to, and further in high peak power and short power wise. It supports a uh, five millisecond and 20 Hertz mode. Compared with the two products, which are close to the power, the Pro version product achieved higher energy density. Okay, the new generation WSUG have two branch, WSUG2 and WSUG2 Pro. The former has higher duty circle and the later has higher peak power. There are eight standard products. You can, you can find the detailed product information in the Foxlight official website. About the Foxlight, uh, we found it in the September to 27 and has developed into most powerful high power semiconductor laser brand in China with the production base and the core technical team in Xi'an. Dongguan in China and Dortmund, Dortmund in German, Germany. We are engaged in high power semiconductor laser component. Uh, it is photo generation, photon generation and uh, uh, laser optical component. It uh, called photon control in the upstream of laser industry. At present, we are expanding to photo application module and the system we can call solutions in the midstream of laser industry. This is a main product line of Dell laser BU of Fox Light. It covering open package, uh, the fiber coupled module and the medical and the aesthetic laser dialed and so on. Okay, thank you for your listening and hope to further discussion and the cooperation with, with you. Thank you very much, you. Jason. If you want to get in touch with any of the companies today, please remember to send me an email, jose.poto at epic-asoc.com, and please follow up with the, with the speakers after the presentation. First of all, I would like to ask you the so-called epic question, which is what can you do for the other epic members and what can they do for you? Okay. Uh, we, we can see, we can discuss about the solution of the hair remover equipment, and uh, we can have uh, some samples about the VSUG2 and VSUG2 crew. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jason. We have a few questions for you in the room. The first one is coming from Imaging Optic. Xavier, what's on your mind? Yes, uh, my question was, what, what is the wavelength of your uh, VCL2? 
Yeah, okay. it now support uh, three main uh, wavelength, wavelengths. Uh, it's uh, eight, uh, 808, right? 755, and 1064. Very good. The second question is from BPI Photonics. Chris Malone, what's on your mind? Yeah, th thanks for the talk. I, I was just curious. You had uh, you distinguished between the VSIL 2 and the VSIL 2 Pro. I was just curious about the benefit of having a higher peak power in the VSIL 2 Pro over the higher duty cycle in the VSIL 2. Could you explain that a little bit? Yeah, we, uh, we have one uh, platform. You can see there are four uh, product, but we can uh, use two different chips. One is a 120 watts per bar, and another is 200 watts per bar. And uh, uh, the, the, they have the different duty circle. Uh, the former is a 30% duty circle, and uh, uh, the 200 watt per bar is a 10% duty circle. Jason, thank you very much for a great presentation. I would like to highlight that the reason these lasers really stand out is on their beam quality. And that is something that it makes a huge difference in this industry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for bringing the European micro-optics revolution to the success story that Focus Light is becoming. Thank you very much, Jason. Let's continue with the program today. We started, we want to finish on time. You know, I'm an, I'm an optics optics fan. And there is a tool that I love the most in the world. It's the autocorrelator. I really love autocorrelators. And today we have one of the success stories of making autocorrelators. We have today with us the company Fento Easy. Mathieu Semenu is the sales manager at Fento Easy, and they're going to show us the new rock, the revolutionary OEM Fento second autocorrelator. Mathieu, thank you very much for being with us today. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to the autocorrelator of Fento Easy. Thank you, Rose, for the introduction. So I'm very happy to be here today to uh, introduce Fento Easy to uh, the photonics world and also to introduce this very new product that we have just launched, uh, the Micro Rock. So I will start by giving a few words about our company. So our company was founded in 2016. We just celebrated our fifth anniversary, and uh, this company comes uh, out from the as a spin-off from the Celia Laboratory in Bordeaux, which is in the southwest of France, uh, a very active area in the field of photonics, where you can find uh, big names uh, like uh, laser manufacturer Amplitude the Laser or the CEA with the Laser Megajoule. So it's a very nice area to do photonics. So. This company was founded by two experts in their own domain. One, uh, Antoine Dubruy, who is an ultra-fast laser and physics expert, and also uh, Stéphane Le Cornet, who is uh, uh, an expert in the software development. So currently, we have about uh, 10 people working in the company, and uh, we are located in a like, uh, photonics cluster where we have uh, 200 square meters, including uh, 50 square meters of clean room. So our uh, expertise, uh, as our name uh, explains, goes from uh, ultra-fast laser instrumentation. So we have systems for uh, temporal characterization of ultra-fast lasers, such as autocorrelators or frog systems. But uh, not only uh, such characterization device we can offer, we have some beam profilers for any kind of laser, uh, some imaging spectrometer or frequency conversion units. And uh, as I mentioned uh, before, one of the two associates in the company is, uh, is a software uh, developer. So this is clearly one of our main axes of development is to provide the best software experience to our users because it's clearly key to uh, any um, characterization device. So we put a lot of effort on, on software development. So today I'm glad to introduce uh, the Micro Rock. So this is uh, our latest uh, single shot autocorrelator design and uh, without any doubt, the most compact autocorrelator on the market. So as you can see here, I have one unit, so it's extremely small. The, Current competition, uh, smallest or more compact uh, unit is probably more than 15 times uh, 
bulkier than, than this micro rock. So this is clearly a breakthrough in uh, autocorrelation uh, measurements, and we are glad to bring that to the market today. So in addition to compactness, it's quite easy for to align, and we currently have two versions for the most popular uh, ultra-fast lasers, which are the titanium sapphire lasers at 800 nanometer, and also the ethereum fiber lasers around 1030 nanometer. So as a way to integrate these devices in a more complex system, uh, we also provide a standard REST API, which can uh, make introduction easy by using a HTTP uh, request. So the design principle of single shot autocorrelation is quite different from a conventional device where you have uh, basically scanning uh, arm where, where you can scan the pulse duration by moving and transition stage. In the single shot autocorrelation device, you don't have any moving part. The beam is split in two parts here and will cross, the two beamlets will cross in a uh, second harmonic generation crystal. By measuring this autocorrelation trace with a two dimensional detector, we can uh, reconstruct the, the pulse duration of uh, any ultra fast laser. So, with, uh, in comparison with the conventional scanning uh, autocorrelator, as I said, there are no transition stage. It's definitely much more compact and robust. Uh, it's also more easy to align. And even though it's uh, based for a single shot laser, it can also work with any repetition rate like megahertz laser or, 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 or that kind of laser. Uh, it has some, let's say, limitation. Uh, so compared to conventional techniques, uh, it's a little bit less sensitive. So if the laser is weak, you probably have to go for a scanning architecture, which we can also provide by the way. And also it works for limited pulse duration range. So here are the typical uh, spec that we can have. So as I said, we have the titanium sapphire and ethereum systems working from a few tens of femtosecond up to one or 1 1.5 uh, picosecond. So we are, uh, looking for potential customers in these areas like a commercial laser manufacturer when they build this big uh, amplifier system they can put uh, the measurements uh, of the duration right within the laser head we can also uh, discuss with ophthalmology laser uh, system like LASIK surgery uh, manufacturers or laser microprocessing systems, or even at large scientific facilities where you can put the duration measurement uh, almost anywhere. So uh, I'm really glad to discuss uh, any uh, OEM integration challenges with, with you. And uh, yeah, feel free to contact me uh, on my email at, uh, that you can see on the slide. And with that, I will finish almost on time. <laughs> Semenu at fentoeasy.eu. Please contact him for a request regarding this product. You know, when I look at the autocorrelators, I always say, I always do this because I'm used to the traditional autocorrelators. And then you show me the autocorrelator and you show me like that. Please show it again. <laughs> it, is, it is truly great, the aspect ratio of that autocorrelator. Look here in Epic, I have companies like, like Amplitude, Optica, Fentum. What can you do for them? What can they do for you? The Epic question. Okay, so uh, as you saw on the optical design, we have uh, several optical components integrated in, in our systems. So we definitely are looking for uh, suppliers for uh, special optics or mechanics to have the best integration. Because as you can guess, in this uh, small volume, the integration level is uh, very critical. So we are always looking for uh, new components. Uh, that's, what, that's for what people can do for us. Uh, what we can do for laser manufacturer or laser integrators is clearly change the, their mind about uh, measuring the pulse duration of ultra fast lasers. It used to be very complex, very bulky systems. Now we have a solution that allows the device to be located almost anywhere, which changes a lot the potential application that we have for this kind of device. So we would be glad to discuss with uh, laser manufacturers, laser integrators, to see how these uh, revolutionary autocorrelators can help them. Xavier, what I'm seeing here as an industry trend is that we used to have very, very good femtosecond lasers, and we still have them. And we are going in even low, even uh, even low in the in the pulse width, down to 20 to 40 femtoseconds. Uh, my colleagues from Valor Innovations know what I'm talking about. I'm very happy with this. But what I'm seeing as an industry trend is the tunability of the pulse 
length, the pulse width. Uh, have you seen it as well? There are many companies like the Lithuanian Integrated Fiber Optics doing this. Uh, have you, do you have a solution for this? Do you see this could be uh, the right tool to constant monitoring the, the, the tunable pulse width or pulse length of these femtosecond lasers? Uh, yes, that's a very good question. Up to a certain level of tunability, it could be done with that kind of device. As I mentioned, from a few tens of femtosecond up to one picosecond or more. If the maximum pulse duration range goes to tens of picosecond, then in that case, we would have to consider a, a scanning architecture instead of a single shot device, which we also can provide, but it will not be as compact. Uh, so other solution exists, uh, but probably uh, yeah, a little more difficult to, to integrate. Uh, one final question as well. Uh, when you see this tool, this only part, is there a, a software package that comes with them? Do you provide a full solution to especially scientists? Yeah, yes, very good question. So all our systems come with the, the software. It's part of the system. There are no uh, like version or option. It's fully uh, compatible and available to any customers. And for integration, as I said, there are this, this REST API, which allows any uh, programming language to be interfaced with that device to send instruction and get the, the data. So yes, software is uh, available. <laughs> I was kidding. It was not the last question because the last question comes from a friend of yours, Xavier <laughs> Levesque, CSO of Magin Optic. What's on your mind? Yes, I would like to, to ask um, uh, Mathieu, what, what is the, the, the best interest to have uh, so, something as small as you have done? Yeah, so clearly to put it anywhere. Uh, if you have a limited uh, footprint available for a diagnostic, you can put that device. Or if you are thinking of a service team uh, traveling the world to maintain uh, lasers, they have to measure somehow the, the health of the laser, which is uh, mostly the, given by the pulse duration, the, also all the parameters, but the pulse duration is essential. So instead of carrying the, a big bulky device, they can just throw that very small guy in the in the luggage and uh, and travel to to customer site so that also is one advantage of having a, a small autocorrelator semenu at fentoeasy.eu do contact him if you want to test or purchase this amazing very small tiny autocorrelator show it one more to the world show it show <laughs> it i love the size it's great look there at that go. that's an autocorrelator these days i'm so old let's continue with the program let's continue today if you thought that you knew everything about shack harman sensors stay tuned for what is coming and what is coming is nothing less than a big lift we have today with us we have today with is Xavier Levesque, the CSO of Imaging Optic, to tell us about the revolution in resolution they are making with wave front sensors. Xavier, thank you very much for being with us. Please show us, show us the big lift. Thank you, and I'm going to share my, my, my screen. So thank you for the introduction. So today I will, I will, I will talk about um, what we call here a revolution in, in a Shack Hartman sensor. Um, and uh, first of all, uh, let's have a, a look about uh, what is Imagine Optics. So Imagine Optics was created in 1996. Uh, and since we have developed a, a, a very wide range of wavelength sensor and also uh, some, uh, some uh, um, uh, optical metrologic uh, system. And uh, for sure, we have also developed uh, adaptive optic solution based on uh, two kinds of, uh, two, two technology of uh, deformable mirrors. One big uh, uh, mechanical actuator uh, mirror for high power laser and a, a, a small one with magnetic actuators for um, uh, bioscience. And for sure, we have also a strong expertise in custom solution based on our uh, wavefront sensor uh, and, uh, and, uh, and we have developed a, 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 a some software solution uh, around our products. But today, I would like to, um, to, uh, to introduce you uh, the new concept of uh, Shaq Hartman uh, sensor with a high re a special resolution. And this concept is based on um, uh, Shaq Hartman technology, but more than that. So if uh, we uh, look at that, um, 
excuse me. So if you um, uh, see uh, what is uh, a shotgun mount system uh, based on a, a, a micro lens array, here we have just a focus on one micro lens and one spot uh, focused by the mi micro lens array on, uh, on, the, on the CCD. So uh, standard shotgun mount system just is, is just looking at the position of, of the spot that is to say the central lead of the spot. And with this uh, uh, unique information, um, the reconstruction has to assume that the uh, incoming wavefront in front of the micro lens is just a tilt because we just have the two components uh, of uh, the uh, uh, slopes in, in X and Y direction. But uh, into this spot, there are a lot of more information. And this information is um, is linked to the shape of the spot itself. And if you are able, and when you are able to uh, analyze the, the, the shape of this spot, you can <clears throat> retrieve and, and find and, and det determine uh, not only the tilt, but also higher uh, a spatial frequency on, on the small in incoming uh, wavefront in front of the microlens. And this is done with a one image only a phase retrieval algorithm. And it's what we have done now. And here are the, the results in terms of um, um, frequency uh, transfer function. You have here in, uh, in, uh, in blue, you have uh, the standard um, um, uh, transfer function of, of the Shackerman, uh, Shackerman system. And here we do have uh, the twice Shannon frequency for a standard uh, wavefront sensor. That is to say, when we have four micro lens into one um, uh, sinusoid, one period of the sinusoid. And in red, you do have the same uh, transfer function, but for the least uh, algorithm, least reconstruction. And you can see here that um, uh, the um, uh, transfer function reach the same value but for uh, um, uh, same value in terms of, um, of uh, transfer function, but for uh, um, special frequencies that is four times higher than uh, the um, standard check band reconstruction. That is to say that we have a resolution improvement of a factor of four for each direction in X and Y. So in total, the resolution improvement is a factor of 15, that it's huge. And now I would like to uh, show you the result on um, uh, uh, a very complex hologram system. I've chosen uh, natural images in order to have a, a, a very range spectrum of uh, uh, um, spatial frequency. And uh, let's have a look of the standard reconstruction system. So here we are working with a, with a, a waveform sensor with a 50 by 50 microns. So in terms of resolution, we do have here 50 by 50 points. And now when we activate the um, uh, lift reconstruction, we do have this image. So here you can clearly see the improvement, this amazing improvement in resolution. And because uh, you, you can see uh, the nose, uh, you have much more details. And uh, now I would like to show you uh, the big brother of this weapon sensor. So this weapon sensor was based with a microlens array of uh, 60 by um, uh, 50 microlens. And this one is based uh, uh, with a, a weapon sensor with uh, 120 by uh, 170 microlens. And so with the same uh, hologram that is sent to a special light moderator, modulator with eight, by 800 pixels. We do have this with a standard reconstruction. That is not bad, but it can be much better with this, with a lift reconstruction where here you can see almost exactly the same thing that we have sent uh, in terms of holograms. And you can see the small hair of the mustache and all the details of uh, this uh, monkey. So what can we do now with this kind of weapon sensor? So we, we do have here a weapon sensor with a, a, a beautiful um, uh, accuracy, Lambda over 100. It's Shackerman uh, technology, so the, the dynamic range is huge. 
just choose with the best on the market you can find. And with this lift uh, uh, reconstruction, you do have high resolution in terms of spatial high resolution. So this uh, uh, system is just perfect for freeform optics characterization, meta surfaces or meta optics, diffractive uh, optics. Uh, for sure, it can be very useful for middle, middle and high spatial frequency characterization, small defect detection, laser impact metrology if it's necessary, and for sure, at the end, quantitative, quantitative phase imaging. And just to um, finish this presentation, so here we do have the best of the Shackerman technology with a very high sampling density. Accuracy lambda over 100, huge dy dynamic range. It's completely insensitive to vibration. And now with the lift, you have high spatial re uh, resolution. So uh, for sure, we have um, uh, integrated this weapon sensor in our Airflex 2 and Airflex LA uh, platform, metrologic platform. And with this, uh, um, we can open. Uh, Inter, inter, interferometric application with multi-spectral multi multi -spectral, um, capability. That is to say, you can measure at 600 if it's necessary, but also 800, 1,000 uh, 1, nanometers, uh, whatever. Uh, and, and like that, you can make uh, the characterization at the right wavelengths for your application. So thank you, and I'm ready for the question. Oh. Uh, for sure, last thing is if you want to have more information about this product, you can go on our website. You will have three, uh, three videos on, on, this, uh, on this product and one full webinar uh, to have a more explanation about the technology. And if you want to get goosebumps, go and visit the company in Paris because the demonstrator is out of this world. I saw it live last time I was there. Thank you very much, Xavier. Once again, you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, drop me an email, jose.photoatepic.asoc.com. Xavier, you are not going to be surprised about what's coming, right? It's an epic meeting, so you got the epic question. 700 members behind me. What can you do for them? What can they do for you? Uh, what can we do for IPIX member is to offer this, so this uh, new technology, uh, allowing uh, much more than before. And, and we are for sure looking for some uh, uh, European supplier for optics and mechanics and electronics too. Uh, so uh, for sure, we will be uh, very happy to work with uh, other IPIX member for, uh, on, on this subject. And, and sometimes we are, we are looking for a beta tester. So if you want to, uh, to be a beta tester of our solution, please contact us. You know, uh, Xavier, we are living right now the European micro optics revolution. And that's because now we can do free form micro optics at wafer level. That's a huge thing coming. And actually we have somebody, I guess today, that is uh, the CTO of SUS micro optics, Wilfred Null, good afternoon. Hello, Jose. Thank you. <laughs> Wilfred, what's on your mind when you, see, when you see this big lift? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? So, well, this is very impressive that you can do the PSF reconstruction to get this sharp image. This is really, really interesting. What I wondered is, is, is um, do you have to do any calibration uh, of, your, of your micro lens arrays? Uh, what F numbers do you use for those micro lenses? I'm just, I'm just wondering if you could, and no micro lens is perfect, so you have to have some type of calibration in there if you want to get to this level of PSF reconstruction. It's oh, uh, yes, to, to answer to the first question that, what, uh, do we need calibration? For sure, we need calibration. Indeed, it takes, it takes quite a long mm -hmm. to make the, the full calibration of the waveform sensor. Especially yeah. when we want to have a huge dynamic, we, we, we need to calibrate with any, any kind of, uh, of angles, any kind of focus. So it, it takes some time to, to make this calibration. And what about the F number? It's about 20. The F number, okay. uh, it's around 20. It can be less or, 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 or bigger, depending on the, the, the detector we put on the side of the, of the pixel, but that's uh, the rough kind of uh, F number we are using. Okay, thank you. The, the wavefront sensors, so the, the Shaq Harman sensors have been evolving quite rapidly in the last, in the last decade. Uh, Xavier, 
if we could uh, dream away, what is your preferred future? Uh, what, what kind of companies do you think we should outreach to implement this metrology, this ideal metrology tool for complex surfaces? Uh, for sure, I, I, this, this system can, can be very, very useful for freeform optics, can be very useful for uh, people that are, that are uh, using FISO interferometer and that are um, facing some problem because of the wavelengths. And here you can choose the wavelengths, change the wavelengths, and, and, and like that you can, you can make your metrology uh, at wavelengths, at design wavelengths, let's say. Especially for coatings, dichroics, filters, it can be very useful. One of the freeform optics manufacturers in Europe was in the room and he's very impressed with this. Many others are coming your way. But right now, I want to go back to your friend, Mathieu from Fento Easy. Mathieu, there is a question for you in the YouTube universe. Somebody, Andreas STE, he didn't say the company name yet. He's wondering, what is the delivery time right now for your new rock? Okay, so uh, actually we currently have some demo units uh, available. So we would be happy to, to ship uh, a demo for, for testing to, uh, to any potential or potential customer. Uh, other than that, it's a matter of, uh, yeah, let's say eight to 10 weeks, really depending on, on the, the situation of, of the production. And we aim at improving that for the future. The idea is to provide OEMs. So we will ramp up the production uh, yeah, velocity uh, in the future, definitely. Thank you very much, Mathieu. Congratulations. You got a customer today, but we move is on stock. It's in stock. That's the best answer that you could provide. The con we continue with a company that everyone is talking about. They joined Epic only two weeks ago, and I have never seen a company being more spoken about after two weeks being a member of Epic. Pang Dao. They actually are making a revolution in the way that people should think about their optics manufacturing supply chain. And you're going to see why. Co-founder of Pandao, Oliver Feinle. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being with us today. And thank you for revolutionizing the way that people design their manufacturing lines. The floor goes to Pandao. Oliver, we can see your screen, but we cannot hear you. Maybe you are muted. Yes, can you hear us? Very sorry for that. Yes. I think now I'm not muted. Uh, because I have to say something today. Well, um, there are less and less jungles out there, but one of the most dangerous jungles is still existing, and that's the optics fabrication in the optics industry. There are more than 380 tricks and technologies to produce optics, and how can you find way through this jungle? Well, we are a small, we are not spin-off, we have to spin ourselves off, we are a small company, three guys started up in 2020 with a product, software product. It's the same that 50 years ago, the first optics design program, we developed a software which guides you through the jungle, through optics fabrication and selects for your design, the optimum fabrication chain. So optics designers or purchasing managers and management, you want to have successful projects, you want to have the right chain, fabrication chain, uh, at work for your optics, and we can help you uh, during the design stage to optimize the chain and to get information about producibility. Well, how can we do that? How are we doing that? Well, in the jungle, to survive, you need, be, to, you, need, you need to be alive. So we go alive on the internet, and I'll show you in two minutes how Pandao is roaring. But before I can do that, we, we have to stick in this boring uh, PowerPoint for a second standard up until today, since the 16th century in the Dutch, where uh, in, in close to Nordwijk, <laughs> uh, fabrication goes like this. There's a guy who wants to see a stone on a kidney in a human or a stone in outer space. So he's talking MTF image resolution. And there are people like optics designers, they translate not from Chinese to English, they translate from MTF to number of lenses, shapes, classes to be applied. That's called optical design. And then there are people who translate this into optical fabrication chains to produce that. And at the end, it gets produced and then nice or not nice is the outcome. Well, while there are optics design programs well serving uh, the optics designers to do that, there's no forecast without asking a colleague information about the change. We try to change this. 
Well, how are we doing that? We develop software, reads in a uh, lens and spits out replication chains. And wh what can you do with that? Well, first of all, you can optimize your fabrication, your optical design, uh, changing shape, accuracy, see what happens. So we will do this live in the last two minutes. And, uh, and the second application is, of course, you want to have a supplier. So ask the supplier whether he has the right technology on board. Otherwise, it's the wrong trial in the dangerous part of the jungle. So we read in lens quality and throughput, how many lenses you want to produce. We do this in the internet, and then uh, we split out the fabrication chain, the technologies needed and the fabrication cost. We are based on three tricks. One is 25 years of experience in both industry and academia, some data clouds and a really smart uh, software algorithm. So before it gets boring, we jump into the internet because human to human interface is dangerous, politics, like psychology, strategy, and other things. Well, design and fabrication, and with Pandao, we try to fix it a little bit. So let's go in the internet and have a look. Um, if we do that, my computer thinks about it. We go to the internet, Pandao, then uh, you log in. The rest you can check by yourself. Somehow I, I'm a member of this. Here is the surface. We read in lens data, which has, uh, of course, general information. Like I'm doing this very slowly for 20 seconds, then we speed up. You we need the number of lenses you want to produce. Every lens has a diameter, has a center thickness, and is made of glass or germanium or, or uh, silicon carbide, tungsten carbide, whatever you want. Every lens has two sides. Uh, maybe it's mirror, then it's only one side. You have different shapes and so on. Uh, you have to choose that. It's all to ISO standards 10, 10 We read in surf, uh, we need to know the sur surface roughness, the power, and the uh, shape accuracy in terms of uh, irregularity, centering. You can choose convex concave if it's a spherical surface. You can choose coating and so on and so on. It can help you at any time. You can save and so on. That's boring. Let's uh, read in a lens and try what happens. So if we start maybe uh, maybe with a, a convex, spherical convex, spherical convex, both sides, piece of lens. It's nothing nothing special. Just 50 millimeter diameter, 20 millimeter center thickness, and we we do have uh, of course convex. We can, we can have a coating on this one, and it has a radius of 50 millimeter and uh, two fringes, power, one irregularity, nothing shocking. The backside is a little bit more fringent, stringent, half, half fringe. So we can run our program, ask Mr. Bandao, and then we see the outcome. And the outcome is the information about the best fabrication chain. In this case, it's the three-step fabrication, and uh, those are the technologies, curve generating and full CNC full aperture polishing. In case you don't know what this is, move your mouse there and you get uh, literature references that you can better negotiate with your supplier. Do you have CNC full, full aperture polishing available or not? Then I move on to a different one because I know with the, the number of lenses I want to produce, it will cost me 17 euros in this case. And best CNC grinding technology in this case, there are seven tricks to center grind the lens. We all know that hopefully, and this is one euro coating cost in this case here, and testing cost along the way. That's how Bandao is working. So now what can I do with Bandao? Well, in this case, let's play a little around with the, with the numbers. Remember 17 euros, we want to produce 5,000 and we want to have it delivered with 200 each. If we go down to the, the um, <clears throat> let's say the uh, prototyping phase, we want to have 10 lenses each, and things get more expensive, but not 2,000 euros, it's only 370 euros. So it's, it's good to know this in negotiations with the supplier, isn't it? And if we increase numbers again a little bit, let's say 1,000, and we, of course that's a lot of deliveries, so let's do it like this. Then, uh, then you see, well, um, in this case, block application moves in. So things are doing, it's a, it's a huge jungle out there with tricks to be handled and DAO is handling them. If things go up, uh, let's make uh, the managers happy. Then you see uh, uh, precision glass molding moves in. But spherical optics, okay. Hey, let's do some uh, A-spheres. Um, let's go, for example, to one of my friends, the spherical surface convex and a plano backside, a typical European lens, 5,000 A-spheres to do, 220 millimeter diameter. And here we ask you the mid-spatial frequencies on top of the, uh, the enveloping spherical surface. It's okay. It's a three fr three fringe, two fringe irregularity. 
A sphere. And we want to know well, how does this work. And CCP bullet polishing uh, is, is the technology of, the, of your choice. I even published a paper about that. And here you have 120, 172 euros to, uh, to invest. Now, what happens for the optical designer if I go to fifth lambda down? Uh, whoops. And then I can see the cost impact and technology impact. So cost goes up to 120, not double price. 220, and we need MRF in this case. And we don't want to have CCP bonnet polishing. Uh, we do want to have wheel polishing from Adverse in in, uh, in Rochester. You ask ask this guy; he knows how to do that. How to do that? And in this case, that's the best thing to have. Let's go to uh, lambda divided by ten. Don't worry, Jose. I will stick in my time somehow. Uh, so here we go, and there you see bonnet moves in. The I'm being figuring. I'm being figuring is much slower in terms of shaping really good. So in this case, we are only 10 bucks more to invest and we are back to bonnet polishing because we need to polish through. I being cannot polishing. That's it. So now I'm doing something weird. We don't have time. Let's build the night vision uh, thing out of it. Because so far we have been in seven class. Let's do something. Let's do something in germanium. Where's germanium? Here we have germanium. Infrared optics. Uh, well, mm, they have bigger leg, uh, not language, but wavelengths. And they don't need to have such roughness. And, uh, and of course, the, the cleanliness can also be a little bit uh, worse. And in this case, I'm a tiny Muslim. So here you can play around with your design without bothering guys like me who know about fabrication. So ask Mr. Pandau about the best fill in the jungle. And with this, I want to go back and hear a little more details. Contact us. We need managers to check whether their projects are on, on trail. We need optical designers who want to play around and see about, get information about the producibility trail through the jungle of optics fabrication. That's what we can do. And of course, purchasing managers, they want to select the right because you can ignore when uh, when CCP bonnet comes up and your supplier tells you I can I'm the best one but I don't need this don't trust it you ignore it and then you see price goes up 20 percent and you tell this guy better better luck next time thank you. thank you very much Oliver now you understand all of you understand why everyone is talking about Pandao uh, I'm not going to ask you the epic question because it's very clear what you can do for others and others can do for you so I'm going to go a little bit more into detail you are basically not telling only the customers of the optics manufacturers how much they can charge, but also the cost of the centering, centering the cost of the coating. And today you also show the cost of the testing. How, how do you evaluate that? Is that testing not sometimes application dependent? Uh -huh. That's a very good question. Well, we define the quality of the lens. Uh, Pandao eats the lens. So we need the tolerances of the lens, the material, the dimension, the, through, the number of, land, of the throughput. And uh, with this, it generates the output. So uh, the interlinked, interlinked parameters dominate. And the fabrication chain we built has a lot of, a lot of um, informations already there inside. And of course, we show on the surface only the peak of the ice mountain, although in the jungle there are no ice mountains. But here is the testing cost, is the cost along the fabrication chain, taking into account uh, interface from shaping to fine shaping, uh, from for if it's in EUV optics, uh, of course, you, then, you, then you need white light interferometry, otherwise you go with a standard, with, with standard uh, microscopy. And if, if it's into the prototyping phase, we do need a, a high-end prof, profilometer, UA, 3P, Panasonic, or whatever. And whereas if it's standard, we go for interferometry. Huh? Oliver, and, Oliver, the first time I met you, <laughs> I got really scared. When you told me what you do, I got really scared. I said, oh my God, what is going to be the reaction of all the optics manufacturers that I have in Epic? And I must say that the reaction was extremely positive of having this tool in the market. We have a question for you coming from VPI Photonics. Chris Maloney, what's on your mind? Uh, yes, thanks, Jose. Yeah, it was actually a question similar to what you just asked. Um, and, and how does... Uh, the metrology of the fabrication process factor into your calculations? Because I know depending on the type of sphere or a sphere, you might be 
um, reliant on a certain type of metrology. So I was just curious. I know I know you mentioned uh, the grinding and polishing aspects, but I was curious about how does metrology factor into the the cost calculation? Okay. Um... I'm, I'm doing exactly that. <clears throat> uh, the cost drivers in, in, in of optical fabrication chain design uh, is the, the, the choice of the right machineries, of course, for fabrication, but also metrology. And you need to measure sometimes the, the tension in the material uh, and the, the shape and the roughness and the cleanliness and so on. So for each, there's a bunch of possibilities. And each possibility has a, a process window and can, like Lego, <laughs> can adopt to... <laughs> To, to the next one, right? And, and it's like, it's like with, uh, with sprinting and passing on the wooden stick. And, and we, we choose, we rebuild up the chains and uh, as, you, as you have seen, and the interface between the chains is not a, only a space uh, while we typed it, it's also a metrology. It's a fabrication interface and a metrology interface change, uh, se selecting the accuracy for the throughput also. You cannot measure with a, with a high-end profilometer that costs too much and, 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 uh, and medical lens that has to cost three bucks or something. So this, has, this is being balanced and then the output is summarized. And so far we have three guys and we are quite slow, much slower than I can talk. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, one thing here, which is the, the optics manufacturers, yeah. Right now, their customers are checking this tool. It became very popular over the last weeks, and now they're checking this tool. So what advice do you give the optics manufacturers? Because that's information that you're giving to their customers. Should they interact with you? Should they talk to you? Should we cross-check these numbers? Mm -hmm. uh, we went through a better, a better testing phase of three, two years before we moved out. And that was very cruel. It was two bunches of people, optics designers and colleagues uh, through, throughout from Japan to USA with uh, fabrication as well. My answer to, to your question is, hey, uh, contact me. And because you installed your optimum fabrication chain maybe five years ago, and you can recheck whether it's still state of the art and whether it's, it's an out of the box mosaic stone information uh, about it, should I go in an investment project and buy IBF, uh, I've been figuring, or should I stick to my MRF or vice versa? So it's a, it's a second out of the box uh, private information for fabrication guys without being forced to, to, uh, to expose yourself to the competitors. Oliver, congratulations. I love when great things happen to great people and you're a great person. Thank you very much for being part of this adventure with Epic Is. Let me continue with this fantastic meeting. If you are a designer of photonic integrated circuits, like I was for a while, designing an AWG and a right way where creating can be, can be an adventure. I'm not going to say a nightmare, but if you could do this with a click of a button, that would save millions on design time. Let's find out how and using IPKIS. And I love Python. Chiara Alessandri, thank you very much for being with us today and tell us about IPKIS 3.5. Um, just a second. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, but I love your background, Horizon Zero Down, but. <gasps> Tell us, tell us how IPKIS 3.5 uh, works. Thank you for the very nice introduction as usual, Jose. Um, so I would like to talk to you about Reseda Photonics and also um, a lot of amazing new things that we have been working on lately. Um, Reseda Photonics uh, is a company uh, that was founded in 2014 and uh, we are based in Belgium. And our vision has been since the beginning to help photonic IC designers enjoy the same first time right experience as electronic IC designers. Um, this is achieved through our IPKIS photonics uh, design platform. Um, IPKIS is a, a Python scripting environment. Um, and uh, the components that, we that, that you can define in IPKIS are of course parametric components and you rely on uh, one single component definition. Uh, it's, it's centrally defined and these allow you to go back and forth between layout and simulation, having everything defined only in one place. IPKIS also allows you to visualize virtual fabrication so that you can easily check your designs before you send them to a foundry for fabrication. And uh, we also have a, a built-in physical simulation tool uh, called Comfort. Uh, our simulations in IPKIS are possible using CAFE, which is our built-in simulation engine. Um, and so you, 
define the, comp the models for your components together with the layout in one single place. So you can uh, quickly validate your components by uh, checking layout and simulation together. Um, the, the Lucida platform uh, offers uh, access to a great number of PDKs uh, from founders all around the world. So our designers can uh, freely choose the founder that they want, or they can switch between one and the other and uh, find the one that suits them best. In addition to uh, our basic uh, if case product, we also offer basic in the sense, it's not basic, but our uh, main offering, we also offer extra modules modules like the IPKIS WG designer, and uh, also links uh, such as the link for Siemens CDA, um, ANSYS Lumerical, and the Assault System Simulia. So these are links to third party tools. Uh, lately, Lucida has been very busy uh, releasing new content. Uh, last year, we launched uh, Lucida Academy, which is an online learning hub, uh, which how uh, both beginning uh, designers and expert designers can use it to learn uh, about photonics design. Um, they can get started there or they can learn about uh, new applications and uh, new ways of designing their circuits. We also release at the end of the year IPKIS 3.4 uh, with a focus on the link for SIM and CDA. And then recently, a couple of months ago, uh, we released uh, IPKIS 3.5, uh, where we focused on a great update for the IPKIS AWG designer. Coming up uh, next month, uh, we have uh, another release which will focus on uh, an upgrade for the link uh, for ANSYS Lumerical. Uh, but let's see more in details about uh, our latest release, which is focused on the AWG designer. Uh, the AWG designer uh, is an IPKIS module, and it provides an integrated design environment to design an array that we have got gratings. So designers can go from high-level specifications to manufacturable uh, AWG layouts, and they can leverage uh, the expertise, uh, assistance, and control that the AWG designer offers them. And this is a tool that has been built by us. So it's been built by photonics engineers for photonics engineers. Uh, so we take into account all the uh, pain points the designers usually experience and try to offer the best tool uh, that designers can find out there. Um, so designers can go through all the design stages. So going from high level specifications uh, through physical synthesis, simulation and verification, uh, and then they can generate VRC clean layout. So every step can be optimized uh, and, um, and the, it can also be customized so that it suits specific requirements uh, in terms of layout or simulation. Um, and then uh, designers can take the final AWG layout and reuse it within the IFKIS platform. So they can upgrade in couplers, test structures, uh, fix their designs for uh, DRC errors uh, using, using uh, functions offered by the IFKIS tool uh, and so prepare their design for tape out. Of course, our focus is always on having manufacturable designs. Uh, so we also validate the, uh, the AWG designer on our IPKIS PDKs. And so I want to invite you to try this out yourself. Uh, we have organized the AWG training in, uh, together with Ligentech, which will happen in June with two sessions, uh, one in English online and one in Chinese in person in Shanghai. Uh, and uh, this uh, training is uh, kindly supported by Epic. So I really want to thank you for that and also want to thank you for having us today. And I would like to thank you for all the work that you do with all your partners. You realize Lucida knows the importance, the importance of work with the companies in an ecosystem. You are an example to follow. If you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, host.pod.epic.assoc.com. But Kiara, you're not going to be surprised at what's coming. The epic question, what can the others yeah. do for you and what can you do for the others? Um, well, of course, uh, we always like to learn from our customers. So we, we want to... Uh, specifically about the AWG designer, we really want to have customers to uh, build AWGs for a wide variety of platforms. So we uh, offer, in fact, also PDKs on a wide variety of platforms. Um, and we want to help them get any manufacturable, but also uh, like making all kinds of crazy designs, being able to create a, a layout uh, and simulate these designs uh, and make them manufacturable at the same time. Uh, and we want to learn uh, how people use uh, the AWG designer, what, they, what type of AWGs they want to make, uh, and want to learn about uh, all kinds of new crazy applications so that we also can also create better training material that is more suited for them uh, and uh, help them further. In more, in, more in general, um, we like to help our customers designing everything, not just AWGs. Um, designing any circuit or component uh, and helping them get into the market as quickly as possible. Um, 
And so we want to help them with device simulations or building libraries and PDKs, IP management. That's a very important part uh, of what we want to help people with uh, preparing for tape out and so on. Yeah, uh, uh, one thing that defines a good big designer is the capability, especially for WDM and for spectroscopy applications, the capability of folding the AWG because it takes a big chunk of real estate of the big yeah, yeah, layout. Definitely. How, how can you help on that? How do you help on that when you have a, a, a chip with like three WGs? How can you fold them in a way that can save space? Uh, well, the way we help designers with that uh, is by offering maximum flexibility in the way they perform waveguide routing between the two apertures. So we offer some uh, uh, waveguide bundles, uh, waveguide arrays that customers can use out of the box from uh, the ATKCWG designer, or we also uh, offer tools to create their own custom ones. So you have, uh, for instance, in the image, I think that you see now, I'm not sure, uh, an S-shaped AWG, uh, you can have free form, uh, you can have all kinds of uh, waveguide routing. Uh, and so uh, the idea here is that you, you always want to minimize the space. Um, and in order to do that, you also have to be able to go back and forth between layout and simulation a lot. And then the single component definition, like having an in a central design environment from where to do everything is also extremely important to achieve that. Remember that all the major foundries of interactive photonics worldwide have already their PDKs implemented in Lucida software. So any design that you do with a click of a mouse for an EWG to have any fabricated on a chip is ultra fast photonics the way I like it. Chiara, thank you very much for being with us and congratulations on the success of Lucida Photonics. We go from a success story to another one. We go to Lucida, from Lucida Photonics to another company that's making a difference in the world of photonic device design. I have the honor and pleasure of closing this event with VPI Photonics. We're gonna tell us, talk to us about a new interoperable software platform. We love when companies in Epic find ways of working together. And that's exactly what Chris is gonna show us. Chris Maloney, thank you very much for taking the start of closing this event and tell us how we can help BPI being even greater than already is. Yeah, thank you, Jose. And uh, this is a exciting moment to introduce this yeah, new interoperable software platform for the design of photonic devices. So before, before I get into it, I just wanna start with a little bit of background about VPI Photonics and who, and who we are. And we've been providing software for photonic design and analysis in this industry for over 20 years. We've been doing this internationally and our, our software, we like to describe it as being integrated, interoperable and industry leading. So I'll explain how that fits in with our, with our new product here. Um, so first, first and foremost, our, our flagship uh, product is the VPI Photonics Design Suite, which includes both optical transmission design and optical component design, so fiber optics and photonic integrated circuits, all in one design environment and user interface. We also provide uh, software tools for network link engineering. And today our focus will be at the device level. So we're announcing a new product, VPI Device Designer, and that fits right into the, the design flow um, for photonic um, devices. So VPI Device Designer, it's, it's easy to use. It's flexible and it's highly integrated. So uh, it's a versatile simulation framework for the analysis and optimization of integrated photonic devices, waveguides and optical fibers. And it provides a user-friendly Python interface to combine interactive simulation scripts with, uh, with your results, with different figures, problem descriptions and equations. So it's very flexible. And it allows for the analysis and manipulation of, uh, of your simulation results. So for almost any desired performance criteria, including your calculated EM fields. Um, and it also enables the easy creation of uh, simulation compact models for uh, designing waveguides and devices and integrating those into the the next level up in the design chain workflow. So for VPI component maker photonic circuits, as well as our, our various uh, toolkits for the foundry PDKs. So th this tool offers uh, 2D mode solvers, which uh, 
allows for the standard finite area layout of 2D, of 2D objects, such as circles, ellipses, rectangles, and, and so on, but also infinite area layout objects. So planes, half planes, um, such as that. Um, it, it also uh, enables full vectorial finite difference, these 2D mode solvers, solvers for various uh, applications. So for straight and bent, uh, and isotropic, isotropic channel waveguides and, and fibers, as well as for the calculation of guided and leaky modes. Um, so, so this includes uh, things such as absorbing perfectly matched layer uh, boundary conditions, um, as well as uh, symmetric, perfect uh, electric or magnetic conductor boundary conditions. So it's a very flexible, wide variety of applications are, are possible. Um, to explore. Um, in addition, um, we also um, support uh, 2D and 3D uh, beam propagation method um, solvers. So this is enabling modeling of photonic integrated circuits with uh, ex excitation uh, by port modes, Gaussian beams, plane waves, or arbitrary field distribution. So you can see a few examples here um, showing a uh, multimode interferometer, bends, couplers, um, splitters, and so forth. So it's a very powerful tool, all um, encapsulated in this Python interface. So how, how does it actually fit into the photonic design workflow? So it actually um, can communicate um, very easily with our uh, VPI component maker photonic circuits tool. So if, if you're designing PICs and you need a, a little bit extra information about a waveguide um, within, um, within that design, you can explore that with VPI Device Designer. And then one of, the, one of the very interesting things is that if you're designing devices for optical transmission systems, our photonic, circuit, for photonic circuits and optical systems tool work in that same design environment. So these tools can give you the, the um, the detail you need at the device level, but also if you're exploring an entire optical system. So looking at the transmitter, the, the fiber, the receiving optics as well. Um, so this is all very integrated together. Now, in addition, we support various uh, PDKs at different PIC foundries. You can see a few of the examples below. And, and we can use the building blocks from those PDKs in our photonic circuits tool. But if we need to um, run some device simulation to fill in some, some data that maybe the, the foundry can't provide uh, some measurement data for, we can actually support that with our device designer tool. Um, and then you just, you just heard from Lucida Photonics, one of, one of our partners where we can actually export um, our, our pick designs into various layout tools. So we're working very closely with a number of our partners in this space as well. So you can see how uh, in, interoperable, how our software can actually fit in into this uh, ecosystem. Um, and, and lastly, Python is the glue that really holds this all together, that allows us to communicate with our, our various um, our partners, as well as our, um, our software tools itself. Um, so, so just to run through a, a very brief example, we can start with the design of a waveguide using our new uh, device designer tool, um, develop a building block that we can use as a, as a compact model in our circuit level simulation. So if we start with a waveguide, we have a building block that we can plug into our schematic. Um, and, and here you can see a, uh, a mock sender modulator that we can use as a building block itself inside of the entire system design. So now you can see the flow of the, the, the entire design flow for this uh, photonic ecosystem. Um, so just to conclude here, uh, VPI Device Designer, it, it uses a, a Python interface. It's easy to use, it's easy to learn. Um, it's very flexible. So you can design a number of different types of waveguides, fibers, design, simulate, uh, optimize those. And, and it's also very interoperable. So you can see the, the workflow within VPI Photonics, how it fits in but also we can drop in this tool into whatever your current design workflow might be. So we're interoperable with a number of our, our partners like Lucida, but also uh, Keysight ADS, um, CST Studio. Um, so it's very flexible that way. So, so I'll, I'll just finish up, please contact us, um, reach out. 
we're interested in hearing from you. Um, we can provide a free demo and, and software evaluation. So, so thanks for the attention. Sales at vpiphotonics.com. If you ever see Chris Maloney at any exhibition worldwide, stop by, stop by and play with the demo with him because that's a unique opportunity. Chris, I miss you. I really want to travel again very soon. Chris Maloney, we have, uh, what you're doing today, what you're showing today is a big revolution, in my opinion, in optical design. Why? Because while we already had FTD, FTD, and we already have VPN tools, the link between those and the layout always was a nightmare. I have had great simulations and whenever I had to implement the layout, it took a really long time. This is really the golden nugget here. What we're trying to do is accelerate that challenge, right? From making the design of the photonic device to being able to have it in a layout, correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we have a, a strong partnership with Luxeda, but also with, um, with uh, K Layout, even with uh, Synopsys Opto Designer. Uh, Siemens EDA, uh, previously Mentor Graphics, um, where from a, a, a click of a button, you, we can go from the schematic to layout. So really simplifying that process. So let's, let's ask Lucida how they feel about this. So we have, uh, we have Kiara in the room with us, and I would like to ask you something. Whenever we have uh, uh, the great layout designer, design tool from, from Lucida Photonics. How, how do you see uh, this? Uh, any company that, who has a good idea for making a 3D design of any optical device that was having been implementing in a layout? Do you think this is, this is feasible? This is the way to go? Um, so you're asking uh, if you should go with layout first or? My, my question here is that normally, normally the way that we do is we have a standardized building blocks. Mm -hmm. And this is the way that we're used to, we take the building blocks from every founder is already approved, we put it in all design, we run it, DRC zero, fantastic. Uh, in my opinion, this is not the way to go. The way to go is that standardized building blocks are good, but not great. And many companies need to make a stand, they need to make their own designs or their own components. And the design of these components was great, but putting the layout was really a nightmare. As a, as a layout design support provider like Lucida, how do you feel about this new revolution that VPI is presenting today? Uh, well, uh, they did a very nice job, so I want to uh, congratulate them. Uh, of course, it's a bit... Uh, um, like, um, like, as you say, a lot of companies uh, need to design their own components. Uh, so I think the role of a design tool is to uh, give them both options. Uh, so you have small companies that uh, don't have maybe the capability, not capabilities, but let's say the resources to design everything from scratch themselves. And uh, there you, they really need to have access to PDK components uh, to help them get started at the beginning. Uh, in other cases, you have very specialized companies that need to design everything themselves, and so you need to give them the tools to do that. So you need to give them simulation tools, and you need to make sure that the simulations are also linked to layout, because Thank you very in much, the end, Kiara, that's this. where you want to go, manufacturing I, I, your layout. You already worked together very well with VPI. It's one of the partnerships made in heaven. Chris, there's a question for you in YouTube. It's coming all the way from the CEO of Imaging Optics, Samuel Bucourt. Are you able to simulate non-linear effects in fiber? For example, for, for instance, billowing effects or Raman effects? Yes. So that's a great question. And that's actually one of the strengths of our, our software is we've been doing that for a, a very long time. And so well, one thing that we like to say about our fiber model is that it's as close to a physical piece of glass as you can as you can simulate. So we can turn on and off various uh, effects within the fiber. So these nonlinear effects, ch uh, chromatic dispersion, the Kerr nonlinearities, right? Um, we can turn those on and off and explore how those effects actually impact our entire design. So you, so you don't need to be in the lab to um, run these tests. You can actually turn on and off physics in your simulation to see, okay, well, what is the effect of something like chromatic dispersion? Is, is that what's really uh, impacting my design here? Um, so, that, so that's really the benefit of, of, this, of this simulation tool. So great question.
it is, it is a great software that you have. VPI is also fun. It's very, very easy to use, very user-friendly, and I love it, and I use it a lot in the past. I don't do that anymore, unfortunately. <laughs> I would like to say thank you. Thank you to all of you. Please keep in mind, on the 7th of June, which is actually next Monday, we had our Big Cell event of the year, and I'm really excited that we had the top five Big Cell manufacturers in the room to solve important technology bottlenecks. But in the meantime, I would like to say this was a fantastic product release. We had really new novel products and we all love some things that were shown today, like, like the very, very, very small autocorrelator, the new rock. Congratulations, all the companies making a difference in the industry. If you want to get in touch with any of the first speakers today, all you have to do is send me an email, jose.moto.epic-asset.com, and I will introduce you to them because I love when things are taken to the next level. Please keep helping us. If you have something big to announce to the industry, contact us. This is the way to proceed. Stay tuned for all our upcoming meetings. And please also, if you are not yet a member of Epic, join Epic as well, because we need to be together to be stronger. Until the next time, get vaccinated as soon as possible, because I can't wait to start traveling again. See you soon. Bye-bye.